Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm often emphasizing to people that our main, authentic, original sources for Norse mythology are two books called Edda, both written down in the 1200s in Iceland, the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. But what does the word Edda mean? Well, scholars aren't really sure, but in this video I'll offer you the explanations that I'm aware of, as well as the one that, uh, for whatever it's worth, I favor myself. So a quick capsule history of the use of the word Edda. The title is actually what was given to Snorri Sturluson's book, what we call the Prose Edda, probably by Snorri. At least we infer it's Snorri's title based on the fact that it already occurs in references to the book in the 1200s. The reason that book comes to be called the Prose Edda or Younger Edda is because it cites poems that were not known to scholars until the 1600s with the discovery of the Codex Regius Manuscript or an Icelandic Konungsbók. The fact that those poems, famous poems such as Voluspa about the beginning and end of the world, Hovamal, Odin's Wisdom, are obviously the same ones that Snorri was working from in writing his Edda, made people call that book the Elder Edda because it was uh, it composed of older material than Snorri's Younger Edda. However, scholars today typically prefer to call Snorri's book the Prose Edda, prose meaning simply plain language, it's not written in poetry, and what was called the Elder Edda, the Codex Regius Manuscript, the uh, Poetic Edda, because um, otherwise you can kind of get a, a mistaken sense that the manuscripts themselves have that age relation. In fact, Snorri wrote down the Prose Edda before the manuscript of the Poetic Edda that we have existed. Now, the manuscript of the Poetic Edda that we have is a copy of a manuscript that's earlier than Snorri, so it all kind of leapfrogs. But calling them elder and younger um, gives kind of a mistaken sense of, of the relationship of the manuscripts, and, and so I, like most scholars, prefer poetic and prose Edda. All right, but what does Edda mean? Why did Snorri call this, his book this? Whatever Edda means, it's not a common word in Old Norse. So, potential explanations include that it is a pun on Latin Edo, meaning I make or I make poetry so that it would be like the, um, the poetry-making book, but a, like a weird Latin pun. Now, this sounds, it, it sounds dismissive the way that I'm putting it, but in fact there is an Old Norse word, creda, which is borrowed from Latin credo, I believe. So creda is then the, uh, the Old Norse word for the, the Christian creed. So you could take edo, I make poetry, and have edda as the... Uh, the sort of Norse punning uh, derivative thereof. To me, this is pretty forced. Kreda from uh, Credo is a pretty uh, isolated word in the Old Norse lexicon, and it's hard to see why exactly Snorri would turn to Latin for this. In fact, we can't be entirely sure that Snorri knew Latin that well. He did go to, uh, well, calling it school makes it sound like, you know, it's a place that had bells and hours and lockers. He was educated at a place called Ori, uh, but whether he had a really strong command of Latin is hard to say. He was at least literate in, in Old Norse. But there are serious scholars who favor this explanation, including Anthony Falks, uh, who is the, um, uh, the major living scholar of the Prose Edda, and whose translation of it uh, is the one that I recommend. Now, I mentioned that Snorri was educated at a place called Ori, so another possible explanation is that Edda is the book from Odi. Now that looks, again, sort of forced if you don't understand why this explanation kind of works. Um, there is a sound change in Old Norse called I mutation or I umlaut, and one of the possible changes involved is O's becoming E's. Now, in words for people from a place, typically there is I umlaut of the vowel in the name of the place. So, credibly, you could say that a man from Ori is an Edi, and a woman or a book, which is feminine in gender, from Ori is an Edda. So book of Ori is another possible explanation. Although again, 
a little bit forced seeming to me. There is also a potential for derivation from the Old Norse word oðr, which means poetry. Now, this is not a common word for poetry, but again, with eye mutation and um, a slightly forced uh, derived weak feminine noun uh, made from oðr, which would probably involve doubling the d, the, the ēð, which makes it into a d, you could get something like edda out of this, and it's like the book of poetry. I find this one particularly forced. Then there is the possibility that it comes from ather, which means eider duck, from a similar process where we've got, all right, ed, uh doubled his D, the uh, short form of the same vowel that is written as ash when it's long is written as E when it's short. So you could get ed out of this. I'm still feeling like this is kind of forced, but this is favored by very respected scholar of Old Norse language and literature, Anatoly Lieberman. So just possibly it means the book of the Eider Duck, Ather. Now, why would it be called Eider Duck book? Well, why is the uh, oldest manuscript of the Icelandic law code that we know of called Grey Goose, Grogos? Possibly there was actually a tradition of naming books after birds. If that's the case, the uh, Eider Duck, Ather explanation could work. Now, the explanations I've just mentioned are pretty well known. A little bit more obscure one that you don't hear so much anymore, uh, probably because it's uh, not particularly plausible, is that it is the past participle to a verb from the same root as era, which means spare. Now, the past participle of era, uh, if you're talking about a book, would be er the. So that is the spared one, the saved one, the preserved one, the like salvaged one, right? Salvaged uh, old lore or something. Uh, okay, fine. But how do you get Edda out of Erda? It's just not uh, particularly plausible. Postulating that there was some, you know, verb uh, like maybe Eda or something uh, that you could get this out of this from the same root as Era is possible, but you can speculate lots of things. So not many people favor that idea anymore. All right, let me just give you a quick word from my sponsor, and I'll be back with another ex explanation and the one that I think holds the most water. Now, I am a big fan of Occam's razor. I would always like to explain something with a simpler and um, minimally forced uh, explanation if I can. That is why I favor what I think is the simplest meaning of the word Edda, which is great-grandmother. Now, in the poem Rigstula, where Heimdallr, the god, traveling as a Rieger, uh, generates all of the subsequent generations of humankind early in our species history. It's a long story, see my video about this. Uh, if you want more information, I'll read it in my English translation of my translation of the Poetic Edda. We hear the Old Norse word for great-grandmother is Edda. Now, this word is not common. It occurs really only here and in a couple other isolated poetic contexts, but it's clearly a legitimate Old Norse vocabulary item. And it's related to uh, another kind of obscure word for mother, Ada. So great grandmother. If the stories of the old gods, and of course the way of telling the stories in skaldic poetry, which Snorri is trying to preserve in his book uh, that he called Edda, remember the book is originally just, the title originally just applies to his book, um, then you might think of those as the stories in lower and poetic style that was favored or taught by your great grandmother. So the book functions as, in a sense, an artificial great grandmother to a later generation that already in the 1200s in Iceland was forgetting the lore um, and poetic styles that perhaps a great grandmother could have taught them. And so this is the adoptive great grandmother of the old lore uh, and old poetry for subsequent generations of Icelanders and through 
uh, scholarship and translation in much later centuries, the rest of us who are interested in Norse mythology. I favor this idea because it's the simplest, but I certainly respect the other, uh, the, the partisans for the other explanations. And uh, I hope this has given you a look at uh, just how diverse the answers to this very meaningful question are. For now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the very best.